Thank you everyone for joining me this afternoon as we talk about the application process for PA school and demo the CASPA application system. The first thing that I would like to address is that um, likely many of you have some concerns about how the current COVID-19 um, pandemic might be impacting your application in the 2021 application cycle that will open later this month. So I want to point your attention to this website. Um, NAP, which is the National Association of Advisors in the Health Professions, has created a consolidated website with information related to the COVID-19 pandemic as it impacts particular application systems. So if you look under physician assistant, you will find the PAEA coronavirus resource website, and this is where PAEA will be posting all of their information in regards to any impact that the pandemic might have on timelines for the application. As of today, April 1st, there have been no changes to the application timeline or school deadlines that we are aware of. However, that is potentially up to change depending on how the pandemic continues. So I do encourage students to um, reference that website um, as you move through the application process. So I want to start by talking about the general timeline for applying to PA school. We're currently in the spring semester, so hopefully by now you have identified a date that you plan to take your GRE and have started to prepare for that exam. Um, the GRE prep is something that you can do typically within a couple of weeks um, anywhere between kind of three to six weeks to prepare for that GRE and there are a number of resources available for you to do that. For those of you who have scheduled your GRE, you may have noticed that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, ETS has given students the option if they meet certain eligibility criteria to take the GRE remotely from home. If you're interested in seeing whether your GRE testing date is eligible to be taken remotely, you should go to the ETS website and there will be a little pop-up that you can see if you meet the criteria and there are some technical criteria in terms of your computer as well as some environmental criteria in terms of having an appropriate location to be able to take your exam, but that is an option for students who might be concerned about the timing and whether you are able to actually go to the testing site itself. The other thing you can be doing in the spring semester is beginning to prep components of your application. And so we'll talk about those various components in a few minutes, but the application itself will include a personal statement, and that's something that you should be working on now with the goal of having your personal statement done before you submit your application, honestly, before you even begin working on your application. Your personal statement is something that you're going to want to write, revise, have individuals like a pre-health advisor, faculty member that you trust, PA that you've been shadowing or working with give you feedback, continue to revise until you get the application to a point or you get the personal statement to the point where you're happy with it. And so that process can take several weeks. So I encourage you, if you haven't started working on your personal statement, to start that process soon. I am holding a personal statement workshop via Zoom on Friday, April the 3rd at one o'clock. It will also be recorded and posted on my Canvas page for individuals who aren't able to join us live. The other thing you can start to do now, if you haven't already, is begin to research schools that you are interested in applying to. So the average number of applications that a student submits, well, the average number of schools that a student applies to nationally for PA programs is about nine. 
largely the list of schools that you come up with should be more than the schools that you're probably going to apply to so that you can use some criteria that will come out later, such as your GPA or GRE score, to help you identify which particular schools you're interested in might be a good fit. There is a website that you can use called the PAEA Program Directory. If you Google PA Program Directory, it'll be the first link that appears. And so this is a database of information of all of the PA schools and information about each individual school. There's a number of different filters that you can use whether to kind of determine what schools you might be interested in. If we scroll down to IU, you'll find the IUPUI school, and then it will provide you a number of components of information that might help you determine whether you're interested in reviewing that particular school more in depth. So things like, when does the school start? So the IUPUI PA program always starts in May. So largely, most of you will be matriculating into a program a few short weeks after you graduate. Um, it'll provide information such as how many students are they accepting into each class, what is the length, whether they accept international applicants, the deadline for each application, which we will talk about why later you should ignore deadlines, um, the type of curriculum, standardized exams that are required, minimum GPAs, number of recommendation letters, supplemental applications, prerequisite coursework, and other important details about a school. It also provides you with a website to be able to visit the school's site so that you can find more up-to-date information or other components of the application that you might need. So it's important in this part of the process to be able to um, have a list of schools that you are potentially thinking about applying to so that when the application opens later this month, you have an idea of which schools you're interested in. As we move into the summer, you'll want to schedule your GRE and complete that if you haven't already. Because of the timeline for the CASPA application, we encourage students to complete their GRE by the end of May. We'll talk about that timeline a little bit more in detail later, but that ensures that the release of your GRE scores lines up with the timeline for your application being verified and submitted to programs. You'll also want to submit your primary application over the summer and early in the summer. In the next slide, we're going to talk about the particular details of when the application opens and when we suggest that you submit your application, but please remember that the majority of schools do use a rolling admissions process, which means as they are receiving applications, they are reviewing them, they are making invitations to interviews, and then for schools that hold multiple interview dates, they are filling seats prior to potentially that application deadline. So you want to treat every school as if they are running on a rolling admissions. As you move into the fall semester, you'll start to receive interview invitations. And once you have completed interviews at schools, you should receive your application decisions within approximately 30 days or less. This decision might include an acceptance, in which case congratulations, or a rejection, or that you've been put on a waitlist. Waitlisted students will often not find out until much later in the cycle whether they've been removed from the waitlist and offered admission to a particular school. For some schools, moving into the spring semester, interviews will continue, and so you may not receive all of the decisions from the schools that you've applied to until the middle or end of the spring semester. It's important to note that PA programs typically run on three different start times. 
So like IUPUI, there are many programs that start in the summer and will begin in late May or early June. The predominant number of schools will begin in fall semester and so likely will start at the end of August or very early September. And there are a few schools who have a spring start and so they will likely begin at the beginning of January. Depending on which schools you are applying to and what their start time is will largely determine what their schedule for interviews and when their decisions will be submitted. It's important to know that if you're applying to schools that have varying start times, you may have to confirm a decision at a particular school before you've received any information about a decision at another school. And so it's important for you to be able to manage that process and identify what factors might contribute to you withdrawing or not accepting an invitation to it for admissions to a particular school based on your own timeline. So CASPA will open on April 30th, which is just a few short weeks from today. It's important to know that when the application opens, it is completely open. And that means that in the same day, you could open the application, complete all of the components, choose the schools that you plan to apply to, and submit your application. While there are many students who do this, it's not necessary to submit your application on April 30th. In fact, my recommendation is to not touch the CASPA application on April 30th at all. It's very common for the application system to receive a very high number of um, people who are trying to access it, and sometimes the server is not the most stable and it crashes. You're perfectly fine as long as you complete and submit your application by Memorial Day, which in this case is May 25th. That's early enough in the cycle that for schools who are using rolling admissions, you will be very early in their review of applicants, which gives you the best chance of receiving a favorable review and potentially an interview invitation. For those schools who don't use rolling admissions, they won't review any applications until their deadline. So guess what? You're early. Your application will sit there until everybody else's comes in, no harm, no foul. Um, this is also part of the reason why we encourage students to have their application or their GRE completed by May 25th or kind of the end of May because the timeline for your GRE scores to be released is approximately two weeks and the time for your application to move through subsequent components of the review process before it's submitted to schools can take a couple of days to a couple of weeks. The earlier in the cycle you apply, the faster this process takes. And so ideally, if you've taken your GRE on or before the end of May, your GRE score will be released approximately the same time or before your application is ready to go to the PA schools. And this is the ideal timing. There are two components to the application process. The first step is completing the primary application or CASPA. This is your centralized application service that you will use to submit to the schools that you are interested in applying. All schools will largely receive the same information. So this application is generic at the school level. Your personal statement and other components will address your interest in becoming a PA student and entering the PA profession. The CASPA application is mostly data entry. And as we demo CASPA later, you'll see there are lots of components that you are just going to be required to enter components of information about yourself. The primary application is largely used to confirm requirements such as prerequisite coursework, direct patient hours, GRE, and other requirements used by the school. Some schools will use a secondary application 
And the secondary application may be found within the school specific page in CASPA or may be set separately. Secondary applications are school specific and are mostly essay questions. This component of the application is used to learn a little bit more about each applicant. So it's an opportunity for you to show your personality and express your interest in a particular school. As we review CASPA later, we will have an opportunity to see where you can find these secondary applications within a particular school page, but also know that schools who don't utilize that component within CASPA may opt to send you a secondary application via email. There are some important things to know about the CASPA application before you start. I encourage every student to review the system instructions for CASPA. I know that reviewing instruction manuals is not the most riveting piece of reading that you could be spending your time on, but it is incredibly important to understand what the components of the application are asking for and what are the specific details that will help you complete that section of the application successfully. So I encourage you to review the CASPA instructions in advance and have them on hand as you are moving through the application as a reference. Additionally, you will want to and be required to submit transcripts from every institution that you have college credit from. So this means if you have dual credit from an institution, IUPUI or otherwise, regardless of whether you're using that course credit towards your current degree, you will still send a transcript from that institution. You'll also be required to send transcripts from any institution where you have undergraduate credit from, as well as graduate coursework that you may have completed. So many of you may be submitting several transcripts to the CASPA application system. It's important to know that the transcript process can take up to two weeks. So for each school that you are submitting a transcript, you'll have to submit a transcript request. Many schools, including IUPUI, have an online transcript request form that you can complete to order your transcripts. This then requires that the registrar's office at that institution process your request, compile, package, and mail your transcripts. Your transcripts will then have to be delivered to the CASPA headquarters. They will be processed, opened, scanned, and attached to your application. And so this whole process can take about two weeks. Ideally, you want to have your transcript submitted about the time that you plan to submit your application or shortly there before. It's important to note that for those of you who will be submitting transcripts that include current spring semester grades, you will want to wait to order your transcript until spring grades have posted. So IUPUI will have spring grades posted approximately May 15th. You want to wait to order your transcripts until right after then, but you wanna try and order them as quickly as possible so that if you plan to submit your application on or about May 25th, your transcripts have already been received by CASPA. This allows your transcripts or an application to be marked as complete, ready for review. If your application is submitted prior to CASPA receiving your transcripts, it will be put on hold until your transcripts are received. So it's very important for you to monitor within the CASPA application whether your transcripts have been received, because until every transcript has been received, your application cannot move forward. Once your application has been marked complete, ready for review, it will move into the verification process. 
this verification process is used to ensure that all of the information you submit within the CASPA application about your coursework matches the information on your actual transcript. And so as it moves into the queue, this process could take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. And this is largely determined by the volume of applications that are received. So the earlier you are in the application process, the less time the verification queue will take. Once you move to the top of the queue, your application will be reviewed by a CASPA staff member who goes line by line reviewing your transcript and the information you've entered about coursework. Now this might seem a little redundant because CASPA will have PDF copies at this point of your transcripts. Why would they need you to enter information separately about every course that you've taken? And the answer for this is because the information that you submit into the application is what the application uses to calculate your GPAs. So you will receive GPA calculations for cumulative GPAs, science GPAs, prerequisite GPAs, and other GPAs required by schools. So it's CASPA's job to ensure that everything that you've included in your application matches with everything that appears on your transcript. This is the first point in the process where you, as an applicant, need to make sure that you have been incredibly meticulous and double-checked your submissions because if there is an error or a mistake um, or some sort of discrepancy between the information that you've submitted in CASPA and your transcript, your application will be returned to you with a note on the error. Once that has been completed, it will go back into the ready for, to review process. And so that is holding up your application from moving forward. If the verification process moves forward with no errors, then your application will move on and be submitted to the individual schools. I want to pause here and see if anyone has any questions about the transcript or verification process. Okay, I'm going to move forward, but if questions come up, please remember you can submit those through the chat function. This is a review of the common components of the CASPA application. And so there are a number of different sections that you will be asked to complete to provide information to the schools that you are applying. Biographic information is largely biographic and demographic information about yourself and your family. The academic history and coursework will include all of the college campuses that you've attended, as well as information on coursework that you've taken at each campus. You'll also provide information about entrance exams that you may be required to take. Many schools require that students utilize the GRE exam, although some schools have moved away from that requirement. There is also a new exam called the PA-CAT that will be administered for the first time this May. There are a small number of schools who have adopted this exam and therefore you might be required, depending on the schools that you choose, to complete this exam as well. Information about the PACAT and whether it is being required by a particular school can be found on the individual school's admissions websites. Most of you will not be applying to a school that requires the PA CAT at this time because it is so very early in this exam's existence. The next section is experiences where you will write about the things that you have been involved in outside of the classroom, such as direct patient care, healthcare experience, volunteering, and other things that are relevant to your application. You will also be required to submit letters of evaluation, often referred to as letters of recommendation, by individuals on your behalf. You'll need to complete your personal statement, 
select the schools that you are planning to apply to, and pay the fees. CASPA has a fee structure that requires a base fee for utilization of the application and application to your first school. Individual schools that you choose to apply to above the first one will require an additional fee. It's important to note that you should start making a budget for your application and take into consideration the fees that are required for the primary application, as well as any secondary fees that may be required by schools themselves. Each school's admissions page should have information regarding additional fees that may be required. CASPA does have a fee assistance program. If you're concerned about the financial implications of applying to PA school. You can find information about the fee assistance program by Googling CASPA fee assistance. This will provide information on what the fee assistance program covers, the requirements and application process. It's important to note that individual school fees are often waived or greatly reduced for individuals who have received the fee assistance waiver. This is your pre-application checklist. So we've already talked about the fact that you should be researching schools that you're interested in applying to and compile a list, probably larger than what you will actually apply to, of schools that you are interested in. You also want to explore the application service which we will do shortly. Understanding how CASPA works and the various components that are required will help you be more prepared when the application service actually opens. I also strongly encourage all students to get advice from a pre-professional advisor as they're moving through the application process. If you are a student within the School of Science or you are an honor student from any major, you can schedule an advising appointment with the PREPS office through SSC Campus, available in your one.iu portal. If you are not a School of Science student, you can schedule an advising appointment through the Health and Life Sciences Advising Center. Their scheduling information is available on their website at hls.iupy.edu. In addition, you're going to want to start identifying individuals who can write your letters of recommendation. Each school will likely have preferences for who writes your letters of recommendation. Common preferences include a physician assistant, a science faculty member, and by science they often mean biology, chemistry, or physics, and by faculty they mean an instructor for whom you've taken a course. Additional recommenders might include a non-science faculty member, supervisor, research mentor, or other professional individual who knows you and can attribute your um, ability to become a successful PA. You'll also want to compose your personal statement, as well as once you get into the application, Look for additional essays that you may be required to complete for each school. You can also start organizing your supporting documentation, including experiences that you would like to list in your application, your shadowing or observation hours, the number of hours and locations for your patient care and healthcare experience, as well as any required forms for individual schools that you may be applying to that are available on their admissions websites. The final thing that you should take into consideration is your social media presence. If you think that admissions committees are not scouring the internet to find information about their applications, you would be wrong. It's important to know that your social media presence could have an impact on your application. And so taking into consideration, you may have a social media handle that you haven't used in quite a long time, or that may honestly just have 
very old, hopefully not recent, um, posts or photos that are not the most uh, professional, you'll want to make sure that you're removing those, deleting those accounts, or moving them to private. So I did receive a question that says, would it be best to individualize your personal statement for each school? No. The personal statement that you submit to CASPA will be reviewed by every school that you apply to. So your personal statement should address why you are interested in becoming a PA, not why you are interested in becoming a PA student at a particular school. However, additional essays in the application that are on school specific pages, you are more than welcome to um, address school specific interest. And we'll walk through what those essays could look like when we get into the CASPA application system. That's a good question. Additional preparation that you're going to want to take into consideration is preparing for the interview. So often in these types of interviews, students are posed ethical scenarios and asked to respond. I strongly encourage students to review the ethical guidelines for their profession, as well as watch and read the news in your field. Obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic is a huge issue affecting the healthcare community at this time, but there are lots of other things that are important to healthcare and physician assistants that you should be apprised of. You're also going to want to do some financial planning. So in addition to creating budgets for your application fees, you're also going to want to think about interview travel. Any school that you are applying to, you will be responsible for providing your own travel and accommodations to support your interview. For individuals who are applying within the state of Indiana, that travel may not be particularly expensive if you're able to drive to that location. However, if you're applying to a school that you would need uh, more extensive transportation, such as a plane ticket, you want to make sure to budget for that in your application budget. You'll also want to take into consideration seat deposits, which are required to secure your confirmation of admission at a particular school. I also strongly encourage students to fill out your FAFSA early. So that would be the FAFSA for the 2021-2022 application year, which typically opens in October prior to that year. Finally, you'll want to do some parallel planning. This is a good opportunity to schedule an appointment with the PREPS office or Health and Life Sciences Advising Center to develop an alternate plan should you not be accepted into a PA program in this cycle. This alternate plan could include what are you going to do in a gap year while you choose to reapply, or what are alternate options that you want to take into consideration if you select not to apply to PA school again. Before we move into the CASPA application, does anyone have any questions about the timeline or process that we've discovered, discussed thus far? Okay, so let's move into CASPA. As I mentioned, the CASPA application will open for your cycle on April 30th. If you sign into CASPA today, you're signing into the current application for students who are going to matriculate in the upcoming year. You'll note that it says this application cycle is closing soon. You're welcome to sign in to CASPA and play around with the application as long as you don't submit anything. You won't have any harm to the application in your upcoming cycle. But remember, your cycle doesn't open until April 30th. For each application, you'll see that the application is divided into four quadrants. The first quadrant of the CASPA application is your personal information. 
And so these eight sections will ask questions regarding a number of different components about yourself. The very first section is your release. And so this is a number of different releases that you're required to complete in order to actually utilize the CASPA application system. One important application release is your advisor release. This advisor release releases your application to pre-health advisors on your campuses so that they can better assist you through the admissions process. Please note that campuses have a very strict review process for who can access this information. At IUPUI, there are currently only two advisors who have access to this information, I being one of them. This helps us help you. I can't see things like uh, disciplinary information, personal statement, letters of recommendation, or other components of your application. What I can see is information about your application status and your academic record to help you as you move through the process and should you choose to reapply. After you've completed your releases, then you'll fill out biographic information about yourself, including your name, gender, and birth information. The following contact information section requires information about your current address as well as a per permanent address that you might want to include. This is particularly helpful for students who are living on or near the IUPUI campus, but may be traveling to a permanent home residence in between completing your education and starting a PA program. You'll also be required to include information about your phone and email address. Make sure that the email address that you use for your CASPA application is one that you check frequently, but also one that may not be bombarded by other emails and things can get easily lost. This is where all communication from schools as well as CASPA will go, and you wanna make sure that you're not missing out on any of those crucial emails. The citizenship information will ask for information about your US citizenship, state of residency, and whether you have a visa. Your race and ethnicity section is optional. So this information is information that you can choose to submit to the application if you would like. Please note that all components of the application, unless otherwise specified, are viewable by the admissions committee. The other information section asks for language proficiency. You will be required to provide information about your native language as well as any other languages that you um, might speak either fluently or conversationally. You'll also be required to submit information about any sort of infractions, such as a misdemeanor, felony, license infraction, academic infraction, or student code of conduct infraction. If you select yes, you'll have a box with 500 characters to be able to provide an explanation. Please note that if you have a misdemeanor, felony, or other infraction that you disclose, that does not necessarily mean that you will not be accepted into a PA program. It will largely be taken into consideration based on the type of infraction, the school's specific policies, and whether that infraction would result in your inability to be licensed as a PA once you graduate. All PA schools require students to complete a background check prior to matriculation. So if you don't disclose information that will appear on a background check as a part of your application, that is sufficient reason for a school to rescind an application admissions. You will also be asked to complete information about your background, as well as military status, discharge status from the military, and other questions about the PA profession. So 
it, I have a question that says, do all applicants to PA schools require a social security number? That's an excellent question. There is no part of the application that will require you to submit a social security number. However, individual schools may have um, particular restrictions on whether they require citizenship, permanent resident status, except international students, and whether those international students are required to have a social security number. So you should contact the admissions office of the schools that you're interested in applying to to find out more information on um, social security number requirements. The next section is family information where you will be asked to provide demographic information about your parents. This is a section that is only used for data and recruitment purposes and is not reviewed by the particular schools that you are applying to. This section is optional, so you don't have to complete the family information section if you don't wish to. The last section in your personal information section is around environmental factors. And so this asks information about your childhood residency, family situation, and provides information such as economic status, whether you came from a medically underserved area, or had other significant challenges that may have um, impacted you as a child. The next quadrant is your academic history. So this is where you will submit information largely about the colleges that you've attended. CASPA does ask for information about the high school that you have attended. You will not be required to submit high school transcripts. For each college or campus that you've attended, you will be required to submit information into the CASPA application system. It's important to note that campuses are different um, within the IU system. So if you took courses at IU Bloomington or one of the regional campuses, as well as taking campuses at IU or classes at IUPUI, you will need to enter those separately. <coughs> When you add information about a school, you'll be able to search for that school as you begin to type it in. And then it would ask you information about um, the time that you were there, as well as the degrees and majors that you were pursuing and whether you completed those degrees. Once you have done that, for each campus that you have attended or completed coursework from, you will then download the transcript request form. This transcript request form looks like Maybe, maybe not. Bear with me as we have some technical difficulties. There we go. So each transcript request form will have information for the institution that you're requesting a transcript from, including information about yourself, the campus, as well as where to send the transcript. It also has a handy barcode and your CAS ID. This is important to help the CASPA system attach your transcript to your application. For every transcript that you request, you will need to submit this form for the appropriate campus 
as a part of that request. Many schools have an online transcript request form, including IEPUI, where you can submit the request for your transcripts and attach this form to be mailed with it. It's important to note that IU uses a centralized transcript, which means regardless of how many campuses you've attended within the IU system, all of your coursework from all campuses will appear on any transcript that is created. So even though you might enter multiple campuses separately into your CASPA application, you will only need to order one IU transcript. And it won't matter which transcript form you use, CASPA will connect all of the information appropriately. Once you have submitted information about all the campuses that you have attended, then you can add information about your coursework. So within each individual campus, you will add information about your courses. This includes course name, number, categorization, credit hours, grade, and the semester and year which you took it. It's important to note that this is the component of your application that you will want to be extremely meticulous about because this is the component of your application that you can accidentally make an error and have your application get held up. I strongly encourage students to download and print a copy of your unofficial transcript, grab a ruler and a pen, and go line by line down your unofficial transcript as you enter information into the system. This is also where you will want to make sure that you are paying attention to the CASPA instructions for how to categorize your coursework. As you can see, there are a number of different types of course categorizations, and this largely dictates which courses are included in which GPA calculations. So it's incredibly important to make sure that you are paying attention as you are submitting this information into the system. Later, for the schools that you've selected to apply to, you will have the ability to match the coursework you have taken to the prerequisites for each individual school. Note that you can't actually complete this until you've entered all of your coursework. And then once you go back, you will see that you have to review and finalize your transcripts. Once that process is complete, then you're able to match coursework with prerequisites for specific schools. The last component of this section is adding information about standardized tests that you may be completing. You will want to enter standardized test information only for tests that are required by a school that you are applying to. If you are not applying to any schools who require the GRE, you will not need to add any information about the GRE. To add information about your test score, you'll need to add the date that you completed the exam or plan to complete the exam, as well as your ETS registration code. You'll also want to make sure that when you complete your application for your GRE that you have the appropriate school codes to have your GRE exam sent scores sent to each school. More information on that process can be found on the ETS website and school codes should be available within each school's admissions website. The next section is supporting information, and this is where you will start to enter information about your evaluations um, and who will be writing your letters. So you must have a minimum of three letters of recommendation in order to submit your application, no more than five. 
this is where you'll want to look at the schools that you're applying to and see who do they prefer your letter writers be from. For each evaluation request, you're going to enter information about the letter writer as well as assign them a due date. Ideally, the due date should be the day that you plan to submit your application. Then you can include a personal message to your evaluator, maybe along the lines of, thank you so much for writing me a letter of recommendation. Once you save the evaluation request, that will submit an email to the letter writer at the email address that you have included with instructions for them to upload their letter of recommendation. It's important that, to know that it's your responsibility to follow up with your letter writers to make sure that they have submitted your letters of recommendation by the deadline that you have assigned them. The next section is experiences. For each experience that you choose to include as a part of your application, you will first categorize it based on the type of experience. You'll then provide information about the organization and if appropriate, supervisor or individual who can confirm that this experience actually occurred. You'll provide information about the dates, as well as the number of weekly hours and weeks that you were involved, and then write a short description of 600 characters to describe your experience. 600 characters is approximately three to four sentences, and you really want to follow the formula that your first sentence should be a brief description of the experience. Just enough context to provide the reader some information. Your next sentence should address your major contributions or crowning achievements as a part of this app experience. And subsequent sentences should address your learning or transformation as a part of this experience. Experiences that you might want to include do not have to be limited to healthcare. You might include part time or full time jobs that have nothing to do with the healthcare field, but where you have developed particular skills or qualities that are important to becoming a PA. You might also include things such as volunteering, research, or other experiences that will help demonstrate skills to the actual schools that you're applying to, as well as obvious things such as shadowing, patient care, and healthcare experience. CASPA has a separate section to include achievements. This includes things like awards, honors, publications, or other noteworthy things that you would like the admissions committee to know about you. There's also a separate section to add information on licenses and certifications. This might include things such as a CNA license, your basic life support certification, or other relevant licenses or certifications that you want to include. The subsequent section is for your personal statement. This is 5,000 characters where you explain why you were interested in becoming a PA. And again, this will be viewed by all schools. So your personal statement should be school generic. It should just be about your interest in becoming a PA. You'll have an opportunity later, depending on the schools that you apply to, to speak more about your interest in particular schools. The last section is any relevant memberships to professional associations that you might want to include. The last section is program materials. And so you can add programs that are still have deadlines that have not passed. 
To add a program, you can simply look through the list of available programs or utilize the filters to find particular schools that you're interested in applying to. Once you've added a program, you will see a number of different things that you're asked to complete that are specific to each school. The first page is always the home page, which provides information from the admissions committee to the applicant relevant to their application process and or the school itself. For example, the IUPUI program has included a link for admissions requirements. So that's something that you would want to take a look at to see what additional steps might be included. It also provides information for where your status, application status must be by the deadline. A complete status means that CASPA has received your application with all fees paid, all required materials, including your transcripts, have been uploaded. This also includes relevant test scores as needed by the particular school. A verified status means that CASPA has actually evaluated and verified your application and completed those GPA calculations. Some schools will require that your application be verified by their deadline. This is why it's incredibly important to make sure that you're applying early in the cycle because different schools will require different statuses based on their deadlines. So the earlier you apply, the more likely you are to make sure that all of those schools who require verified status are met by the appropriate deadlines. You can see here that IEPUI has an online application that is submitted directly through the school that also must be completed by the August 1st deadline. In addition to the home page, you'll see a page for documents. This is where school specific documents can be submitted. IEPUI requires a prerequisite course completion form, which can be found both here within the CASP application as well as on the IEPUI PA School website. You will need to complete this form, scan it, and upload it to the document file known as other. For the document file known as personal statement, you will need to complete the declaration of intent to complete your degree. This is required for students who are currently pursuing but have not yet completed a degree at the time of application. So both of these forms will be completed, scanned, and then uploaded to the appropriate labeled document space. The next section is your prerequisites. And so again, this is the same information that we saw earlier where had I completed my transcript entry, I could then match my coursework with the requirements of the specific school that I'm applying to. The final section is that question section, which is essentially your secondary application. And so some schools will have this question section embedded in the application itself. Some schools may choose to send their supplemental application questions through email. So here you can see the types of questions that you might be asked to complete. The IUPUI PA program only has one supplemental question. You can see the prompt as well as the character limit. You will not be able to complete and submit your application for IUPUI until you have ent entered your responses to all three tabs, questions, prerequisites, and documents. We can also look at the Indiana State section so that you can see how it is a little bit different. So ISU's page has, again, information on their homepage with um, additional links for school-specific applications. 
The only additional documentation that Indiana State requires is a DD-214 if you have military experience. If you have no military experience, you are not required to submit any documents for this program. Prereqs are the exact same process, but each school will have slightly different prerequisites based on what their program deems important. And then here you can see that Indiana State has several questions. They have a question regarding academic ability, a question about aligning your characteristics and values with the mission of the school, and information about whether you have previously applied to their program. If you select yes, there is no additional information needed. Once you've completed the applications for individual schools that you're choosing to apply to, then you can move forward and submit your application. CASPA will calculate the total fees that are required based on the number of schools that you have applied to. Please note that for both of these schools, they require a separate online application specifically through the school with links in the school specific pages. Those will likely also include an additional fee that will be paid directly to the school. Once you've completed all of the applications and hit submit, then you can move forward with checking the status of your application. And this is important because you want to be able to see whether your transcripts have arrived at CASPA. And had I included information about letters of recommendation, this is where I would see a section similar with information about my individual recommenders and where their letters have been received. This is also where you can monitor the progress of your individual applications, as well as download a PDF or print a copy of your application. This is helpful if you are planning to schedule a mock interview with the PREPS office or the Health and Life Sciences Advising Center so that we can see all of the components of the application that the admissions committee will see. So at this point, we've gone through the timeline and process of applying to PA schools, as well as demoed the CASPA application. Are there any additional questions that I can answer for you all before we finish our workshop today? So I got a question about what about the courses you're taking after you submit the transcript and the application? Can you send grades for courses later or should we be completing everything before submitting the application? And that's a really good question. When you look at the academic section and enter information about your transcript, you can actually add coursework that you have in progress. And so this is where you'll enter information about a course that's in progress, perhaps a prerequisite that you still have to take, or for most of you who will be applying at the end of your junior year, this is an opportunity for you to include the courses that you know that you're enrolling in for summer or the fall semester. This provides that information as in progress and will not allow you to enter a grade for that course. Those courses will appear on the application but will not be factored into the, the GPA calculations or be part of the verification process. Later in CASPA, you will see an opportunity to complete what is called the academic update and you'll see it in this notifications. The academic update is an opportunity after fall grades have posted for you to be able to edit only the courses that you have listed in progress that did not currently have grades. Those courses you can enter grades for, although they will not be included in your GPA calculations. 
that information will be submitted to the schools. You can also provide an additional transcript to verify that coursework. More information on the academic update can be found in the instructions for the CASA, as well as once the academic update opens at the end of the fall semester. If we have no more questions, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I will be posting this workshop to the Canvas page for the Preps office at the end of next week when all of our workshops have concluded.